think we're going to start with a video. It's one of my favorite videos from last month. Um, meet me in front of Strand Books at two. Hmm. Oh man, really? Hey there, guy. Hey there, little guy. Sweet. Remind me to buy tickets for Monsieur Gano tonight. Where's the music section? Uh, oh, yes, this is it. Is Paul here yet? Huh. Hey, dude. How's it going? Wanna go check out that new place I was telling you about? Sure. This truck's really good. Hey, just a second. Cool. Good to see you again. Thanks, man. It's got a new place, not that city. See you, dude. Whoa, cool. Take a photo of this. Share it to my circles. Oh, I'm running late. Music, stop. Hi, what's up? Hey. Hey. You want to say something cool? Yeah, sure. Is that a ukulele? Yep. Okay, here goes. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Do you ever get the impression that you're living in the future? Um, as an engineer, I feel like that all the time. Um, when this, this video is about six months old or something like that, when, it came, when the, they released it, a bunch of the press were like, oh, that's a really interesting research video. Wouldn't that be awesome if you could do that? And then a week later, uh, our boss, um, Larry Page, was in a restaurant in San Francisco wearing one. And everyone's like, no way they exist. Um, they don't work very well yet, but well, you know, we're working on it. And, Think how cool it would be to work on a project where everyone in the world thinks, wouldn't it be cool if that existed? And then suddenly they find out it exists and then people start asking, can I have one and what do I do with it? And people already are debating, they haven't been released yet, and people are already saying, well, what if you walk around in McDonald's with when you get punched, like some guy who had a homebrew one and got attacked in McDonald's because they thought he was taking pictures of them. Um, these kind of products are so cool. I just can't believe how cool they are, and I get to see the early days and help out in the, the building of them. My day job, I'm actually a site reliability engineer. We look after the website for Google, make sure it doesn't break even when uh, terrorists blow up uh, train lines where our fiber is running alongside them, or sharks decide they like the taste of undersea fiber optic cable, or technicians drop spanners into the uh, uninterruptible power systems and vaporize a spanner and a half cubic f foot of steel. Um, we just make sure the website always up, keeps up and running. But the great thing is we get to see this happen. We get to help out with it. We get to test it. We get to suggest new features. We get to feel like we're living in the future just with these guys. Um, when that was launched, there was a bunch of stuff that when you're looking at it, go, oh, that would never happen. That couldn't happen. That would be amazing. Two weeks ago, I was in London in a museum, and I thought, I'm kind of hungry. So I opened up my phone and did a search for uh, restaurants. And the phone showed me a map and a walking navigation to the museum's cafe two floors up. And I was like, uh, what? We've got street maps of all the museums in London? And I went checking. And yeah, we, we have uh, thousands, tens of thousands of buildings in, in, across the UK now have been added to street map. When I heard of the street mapping project, even six years ago, I thought it was insane. It was like, really? You're going to scan in every map in the whole world and work out how it all works? And then the guy said, oh yeah, and then we're going to take a picture of everything in the world. 
everything? You, you can't take a picture of everything. Who can? We just get a few thousand cars, put video, high-end video cameras on top of them and drive them on every road in the world. And then get the same cameras and stick them on backpacks and get people to walk into every museum, shop, park, cycle facility in the world. Just, just do that. It's like, really? Yeah, build an unaided flying vehicle. A kind of a, you know, uh, like the, the predator drones they have in Afghanistan, except instead of machine guns, we're going to sling cameras on it so we can get really high resolution updated, you know, satellite imagery of the whole world. Um, and then two weeks ago, has anyone heard of a game called Ingress? It's kind of crazy. It's an augmented reality game or is, um, where you, you have your phone, you open it up, you're playing the game, and it has a map of all of Dublin. Every landmark in Dublin has one of these portals on top of it, and you choose which team you're on. You go to the portal, and then it says, oh, you know, to take over, to hack this, por this uh, portal, take out your phone and just, you know, move it around the, the portal. Do you know what it's doing? It's taking pictures of all the famous landmarks in the world with mobile phones. And it turns out when you can get tens of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and maybe millions of people playing a game where they're taking pictures of famous landmarks, you get a great 3D database of the world's landmarks. Uh, and the next thing, of course, you tell people, oh, by the way, if you want extra points, add more landmarks, report things that are worth seeing, and we'll add them as a portal so you and other people can take photos of them and submit them to this giant database of all of the things in the world. Um, how cool is that? I didn't think that was possible. Uh, in five years, we're going to have stuff that even now we can't believe is, is possible. This phone is faster than probably the first seven computers I ever owned. Um, and yet, it's small enough to take in my pocket. I couldn't have imagined that 10 years ago. The prototypes of Google Glass were literally a guy walking around with a phone, mobile, a mobile phone strapped to his head. Since then, they've got it smaller than a pair of glasses. All of the technology you need in a mobile phone in your glasses so you can wear it all the time. And this kind of march of progress is incredibly exciting, and I get a massive kick out of it. Um, but you need your own way in. Like, how do you want to get into computers? I did a bunch of weird things when I was young. Some I'm not proud of, some I'm mildly proud of. Um, there's a lot you can't do anymore. Uh, I thought I was into chemistry in the early days, so I used to make, uh, I worked out how to make fireworks, and I used to make and sell fireworks to my friends. It was very profitable, because the guys in Moore Street were charging way more than I could make stuff from. I could make you a Roman candle this size that would burn for 20 minutes, and every so often go pop and do different colors and everything, and I'd charge like 10 quid. Um, it was great value. And it was all fun and games until I, I sold a thing of, uh, what do they call it in the army? What's the sticky stuff that goes on fire and doesn't stop? Napalm. That's the one. Uh, I used to sell napalm as well, and then I realized that you kind of have to take responsibility for what you sell to kids for Halloween. Um, so that ended that, and I went into a different job as repairing cars for a while, because I, I like making things, I like building things. And if you like making things and building things, if you like delighting people, uh, engineering, science in general is just such a wonderful, wonderful field to be in. Um, and Google gets, lets me do those kind of crazy things. I don't sell fireworks anymore, but one thing I do, I used to build enormous storage systems. Uh, went to YouTube and we, one year, myself and two others said, we think we could half the price of all the storage that YouTube use. And the guys in YouTube are going, that's brilliant, because people keep uploading videos. And most of them are rubbish, but we kind of have to keep them anyway. Um, did you know about 10% of all videos uploaded to YouTube are of a cat or a dog? Just saying, 10%. There's a lot of videos. They, 36 hours a second are being, no, that sounds wrong. 36 hours of video every minute are being uploaded to YouTube. And if 10%, that's three and a half hours of cat and dog videos every minute. That's ridiculous. So these have to be stored somewhere. And yeah, myself and two others, we worked out how to you know, store this at half price. And what did the YouTube guys do? They didn't say, ooh, we're saving money. They said, Upgrade everything to high definition, allow people to upload in like super high definition. So now we have 1080p cinema quality dogs fighting under the table. <laughs> um, that's my contribution to, to the world over the last while. But I change, right? Google's a wonderful company, it lets me do whatever I want. So a while ago I decided we don't have enough engineers. We've got way too many smart people and not enough engineers. So I created a graduate program where I could go into sales and say, hey, you, you have a physics PhD in physics, what are you doing in sales? You're too smart for this job. Yoink! And grab them in, retrain them as a site reliability engineer, and now a year later, uh, the poor woman is holding the pager for ads in Google every so often. And there's 19 other stories where that came from. So that gave me a, a massive self sense of purpose to go from creating a normal thing, enormous systems uh, that change the world into training other people so that they could also create enormous systems in the years to come and change the world in their own little way. 
Um, in engineering, you can do that, by the way. If you prove that you can do something, that you can build something, um, it's easy to prove it, right? Because you say, ta-da, there it is. You can test it. It's a real, tangible thing. It's not a feeling. It's not an artwork. It's a thing that does something useful. Um, and once you can do that, people will trust you with anything. 55% of Ireland's CEOs are engineers or scientists. How cool is that? It turns out that if you go to college and get a business degree, what are you going to be able to make again? Because it turns out an engineer who can make a bridge can make a business. Someone who did a business degree can't make a bridge. Maybe they can make a business, we'll see. Does anyone have any questions, by the way, from Google about any of this stuff that you saw here? Is there anything there you think is impossible? Or any technology you think Google would like to do that you think is impossible? Because I bet it isn't. I want to see robots. That's the, the next thing I want to see. Uh, we have departments in Google working on robotic cars and robotic aircraft. Turns out robotic aircraft are kind of a legal gray area, so we're probably not going to do very much there. But robotic cars, they're really exciting. I saw something recently where robotic cars are now legal in three states in the US. Um, we're working on a number of other states. But the problems they're now thinking about are, well, ethics. So if you've got a car and it's got one person in it and suddenly four kids walk out in front of the road, should the car swerve off into the ditch and kill the driver or the passenger, whatever, to avoid the kids. Um, who reckons they could teach a computer how to make ethical decisions like that? Because right now we can't tell a computer, I'm going to drop this glass, what happens? And the computer most of the time won't even know, uh, it'll fall. And that's a big leap for an artificial intelligence these days. And yet people want our cars to be able to know who to avoid and who to run into or to make these kind of decisions. Personally, I'm an engineer, I like simple. I would like to say, how about we have the car just driving normally so someone doesn't put a poster by the side of the road and the car freak out and drive into a cliff. You know, so that's the engineer in me, but there are legal people and people who are like, like the soft fuzzy and want engineers to solve more and tricky problems. Someone's asking me, you know, what does my day look like? Um, very few days are as crazy as this. Uh, I'm about to spend two weeks traveling around the US to some of our data centers. To, we're trying to work out how to make them work more smoothly. We've got hundreds of thousands of servers that break all the time. Um, and we're trying to work out, well, how can we make computers and robots do that job better and easier and help uh, the, the guys in the data center floor do a better, quicker job? So today is very, very busy. Um, apart from, from doing this, I'm also doing code reviews where some of my team are writing software, again, to help people control servers all over the world. We run remote access. It's kind of crazy. Does anyone remember what a modem is? These were ancient network technology that worked in the days before we had broadband. And it turns out that broadband and modern networks are very complicated. So in Google, well, we still have ancient modems that work just like they did in the 1960s and 1970s. So when everything goes crazy, we can still dial in over a modem and fix it. Um, and that's one of the uh, teams that I run. We also have a, a data center automation team, and their job is to try and guess when machines might be broken, try and work out, oh, that machine crashed twice last week, but it always crashes on Wednesday. And actually, the temperature is a little warm on Wednesday. Maybe there's a slow fan. So it tells the human, go out to this machine, it's this model, replace the fan that's located there, and if you see anything else broken, replace that too. Um, which is kind of cool that we can do that. It's not just you get enormously complicated jigsaw and hope for the best. Now, I'm kind of done. I'd love a question off you guys. Come on, give me a challenge. What information could we organize? The last time I asked that, it was a guy from the European Space Agency answered me and said, you've got Google Street View. Can you map all of the universe so I can see everything from the Dogfish Nebula to the craters on the moon? And I was like, mm, can I talk to you next month? Uh, because the month after we launched Google's uh, Sky, where we got all of the imagery data that the Hubble te telescope had recorded over the last 15 years and made it available to everyone in the world for free, which is kind of cool. The guy from the European Space Agency, I'm sure, would have been very, very happy. Uh, but he was saying how it couldn't be done. It was just too much data, and it was really awkward. And you, you would never know which planet or which part of the galaxy people wanted to look at. And it turns out these are problems Google loves solving. Um, OK. Thanks very much, guys. I'll be available for chatting at the Seed Dating Network.